We're going to talk about the AI. This first video is like a 101 level, and it's not exactly designed for the normal viewers of this channel. This is something that you should be commenting on to help boost the algorithm. So go ahead and comment and like, but share this with your boss at work who thinks that AI is a complete product that's ready to go. Share this with your friends and family who keep seeing AI mentioned on the news and they think that it's actually a thing, that robots are coming and the AI is coming and it's gonna take all of our jobs. We're gonna break down what ChatGPT is, what all of the other similar services are, how they work, and I'm gonna do it in the most basic terms possible, so stay tuned uh, because right after the advertisement, we're gonna get into it. Thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring this video. You can get 25% off Windows and Office with coupon code TS25. So they've got Windows 10 Pro, they've got Home, you've got Windows 11, Office 2021, 2019, and 2016. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, and then you'll see everything you've purchased right there. Just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokeys.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. I've seen a few different types of people on the internet talking about the AI. We have the one group uh, and these are largely like the executives or the people who are not directly involved in the technology who are excited about this. They're, they're, they know that it's going to save them a lot of money. They can replace a lot of their workforce with bots with AI uh, and they can get a lot of things done. And they look at this and they see it as a solution that is completely fleshed out and they trust it way too much. You should not trust this technology as much as you're tr trusting it if you're in that camp. Then I see the other camp of workers who are worried about being displaced and artists who very legitimately are worried about having you know their work plagiarized and replaced by these machine learning algorithms that can crank out tons and tons of artwork. I know there's a lot of companies who would much rather just have someone typing a few things into a script. I need a mountain scene with a beautiful town. There we go, there's our concept art. We never even had to hire anybody. I know they would love to replace human beings with bots. I see that group. I see the third group. A lot of people who are industry insiders like Musk and even Wozniak and a few others, Tim Cook and just people from Apple and Google who are concerned about this and are asking for a pause on all of this stuff. So we even had Biden recently make a comment and, and he's, he brought up the risks of artificial intelligence. Nobody understands what is going on. And I'm gonna tell you right now, as far as all of this is concerned, as far as chat GPT is concerned, there is no such thing as artificial intelligence. And we need to be aware of that when we're using these products and implementing them into our everyday life. I asked ChatGTP to have it tell me about itself, and I'm gonna read this for a minute. ChatGPT is a language model that has been trained on a vast amount of text from the internet, including books, articles, and websites. Its purpose is to understand and generate human-like language based on the patterns it has learned from this data. Nowhere in there has it said that it is artificial intelligence. When you ask, a question or provide a prompt to chat GPT, it uses its programming to analyze and understand the language you've used. It then uses its database of patterns to generate a response that is most likely to be coherent and meaningful based on the context of the conversation. So what you've just heard there, and we'll go into the second part in just a second, is not artificial intelligence. It is a very, very good database and it's also a very good predictive text model where it can look at patterns in the text and try to predict what it should return to you. And it is a genius piece of software when it comes to that, when it comes to just putting everything together and it tries to figure out what you said and just plain, almost like talking conversational language. It's really, really clever. And then it can go and look through all of its stuff and put together sentences with the information that it thinks you need. It's a genius piece of software, but let's continue. However, it is important to note that ChatGPT doesn't actually understand the content of what it's saying. 
I'm going to read that again. It is important to note that ChatGPT doesn't actually understand the content of what it's saying. It's not capable of true abstract thinking or creative problem solving like a human. Instead, it's more like a highly advanced predictive text program that can generate responses based upon the patterns or based on the patterns it has learned from its training data. Overall, ChatGPT is a remarkable tool that can generate highly convincing and coherent responses to a wide range of questions and prompts. While it's not true, a while it's not a true AI or a creative intelligence, it is a powerful tool, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, right there, you have it. It is not intelligent. It is just giving you answers based upon its advanced predictive text program. So that is what it is. Now, having said that, it is not an arbiter of truth. I also asked it why it trains its data on stuff that is factually incorrect, like the internet. Why would it train? Why would it use just everything to train? All right, so it says this training data comes from the internet, which is a vast and diverse source of information. This means that it includes a wide range of content, including some that may contain, hello, uh, some that may contain factual inaccuracies or misinformation. While this may seem problematic, it is actually an important aspect of training ChatGPT to be an effective language model by training on a diverse... So you can read everything here. I want to read this last part. It is important to note that ChatGPT is not designed to be a fact checker or an arbiter of truth. Its purpose is to generate language based on the patterns it has learned from its trading data, not to determine the veracity of the information it's working with. It's up to the humans to evaluate the accuracy and credibility of the information they encounter online. And that is going to be a problem in the future, especially for, for teams who are being replaced by these models. Uh, so far from my personal use of this, and I've used it for messing around with Linux servers and just asking general questions, um, it's been about 60% correct. And it's the first things I asked it just to test out to see you know, how, how correct it was going to be, I asked um, who created PayPal. And it spit back, Elon Musk created PayPal, which is completely incorrect. PayPal was created by Peter Thiel and a number of other people, and Elon Musk came on board uh, later, and he put a bunch of money into it, but he didn't even have any code in, in PayPal. He didn't like the name PayPal. He wanted it to be x.com, and while he was working with that company, the company wasn't even titled PayPal, so that's incorrect. Then I asked, who created Tesla? And it responded that Elon Musk created Tesla. It was Eberhard and Tarpening who created Tesla. So. The first two things that I asked it that when I first started were both incorrect. And recently I was working on a little project where I was uh, putting together a list of some old video games from 1992. And I said, could you please give me a list of video games from 1992? Over here you can see some of the stuff I've been talking about, but right here you can see I asked, you know, help me come up with a small list of blah, blah, blah from 1992 PC games. SimCity 2000 did not come out in 92. Some of them came out after, a bunch of them came out after. And then I asked for another list and it gave me more games. If you look through these, a bunch of them came out after 1992. Some of them in 1994. Some of them were correct, but a lot of them were incorrect. So I, I couldn't, you know, I could, you know, Lemmings 2 came out in 93. Like I, I can't trust this information, you know, like with, with this, it's better to just do a regular internet search. I'd been, I've been using this for lots of different things. I asked it how, how long was a schooner? in you know the 1700s how long was a schooner and you know it gave me the information but now i'm wondering should i go back and double check all of this information you cannot rely on this information you absolutely cannot chat gpt is a really fun tool but it is not artificial intelligence we do not understand how the human brain works we do not understand how to create true uh, intelligence and uh, calling this artificial intelligence is completely ridiculous because what we've done or what they've done is marketed something to the public as something that it is not. And everyone kind of just thinks this is it, we're here, the singularity is going to happen any second. No, I, I'm sorry. Kurzweil fans, the singularity is not upon us. That's all I'm going to say for this video. We're not going to get into the broader societal implications in this video. I'll save that for the next video. We're going to get a little bit dark. Uh, and if you're someone who is just gung-ho about this technology and cannot wait to use it to you know, exploit the world as much as possible, well, you might want to skip the next video because it'll, it'll make you sad. Anyway, I'll see you in a few days in that video. Be sure to comment. Let me know what you think about this. And please share this with people who do not understand these platforms. Oh, one last thing. Let's do a little sale since I've got everybody here. We'll do the mice this time. Half price on mice. 
just use the coupon code Happy Mice over at EpicPants.com. We've got this one with the 3310 sensor, which I love. It's got a nice feel to it. And then we have our other mouse with the 3360 sensor. Both are flawless. Um, that one's a little bit faster, but I, I like the 3310 sensor a lot myself. Anyway, head over to EpicPants.com. Coupon code Happy Mice. I'll see you in the comments.